Hello everyone, Simon here with pack to live Today we're going to be taking a look at tarp ridge lines as part of our series on tarpology. Uh, and in particular we're going to take a look at setting up an entirely new ridge line from scratch um, on, I think it'll be the DD Superlight is the tarp I have with me today, which is a 3 meter by 2.9 meter tarp uh, that I've, uh, I've been playing with for the last few weeks and uh, enjoying. Uh, so we're going to set up a, a ridge line from scratch, get the prussics done, get it all set up nicely so that the tarp is ready to use straight away and uh, we'll take it from there. So I'm going to get my tarp out now, which is currently bundled up with an old ridge line. It's just the one that I've borrowed from my... It's just a ridge line that I've borrowed from my DD 4x4 just because I've been playing with it. But I'm going to set this up with its own ridge line now that more suits the style of this particular super light tarp. Uh, just a quick word on the tarp itself. The DD Super Light is incredibly compact. Um, it actually packs down as small as the DD Small, which is my has been my favourite lightweight tarp uh, for the last year or so. Uh, but I recently got hold of a DD Super Light and I've been playing with it to try and see how it rates against, say, the 3x3. And of course, because the basher just barely covers my hammock and I wanted a little bit more room. Uh, also, the Super Light is actually lighter than the DD Small as well. So I just, just seem like a general all round win for me. Uh, and now I have one to play with. The ridge line that we'll be setting up is this yellow Amsteel or Dyneema cord. I believe this is two millimeter diameter cord. Uh, it's different to the Amsteel blue that I have here in that it's not slippery at all. It's actually got a very good amount of grip on it. Uh, it's obviously thinner, it's lighter, and that's actually 15 meters, whereas 15 meters of the Amsteel blue well, it takes up significant more room when, significantly more room when you consider that that's only 12 meters and it occupies a hell of a lot more space than 15 meters of this. I've gone with bright yellow because I intend to use this ridge line more on private woodlands than rather than stealth camps. Uh, however, I find it's fairly easy to conceal a ridge line if you pitch in the right place in the right way. Uh, so I'm not too worried about my ridge line being seen by other people. Uh, I'll be using a couple of mini carabiners, just show those to the camera, just a couple of mini carabiners uh, and some of the uh, black cordage that comes with the uh, DD tarps by default. So it comes with some black guy lines, I'll be getting rid of those guy lines and using that cordage to make the prussics for this one. We'll get to all that in a moment, I just wanted to show you, but I'll also be using a singular figure nine. Only use one figure nine. We'll get to why in a moment. You only need one. Now that I've got everything out of the pack, we'll move over to the tree and we'll start getting everything set up. Okay, so the way I'm going to be setting this ridge line up is slightly different to the way you would with a brand new tarp in the sense that I already have a ridge line on here that I need to remove. So what I'm going to be doing is an actual ridge line swap rather than a fresh ridge line setup. The principle is basically the same once you actually start running the ridge line. Most of it is very straightforward. I imagine many of you will already know this. This video is for the benefit of newcomers to tarps. Uh, what you want to do with a brand new tarp, especially a DD that doesn't come with a ridge line, is you want to get yourself a nice open space, lay your tarp out on the ground and peg all four corners down. That will expose the entire length of the ridge line. It will make it very, very easy for you to run the cord, the actual ridge line cord, through the tarp tapes and start securing everything. In this case, I'm going to hang the tarp from a tree as though I were going to use it. And then I'm going to simply swap in place one ridge line for the other and we'll set it up as we go. First thing I need to do is attach the tarp around this tree, uh, which means I have to actually unbundle the tarp. One thing I'd like to mention just quickly while it's in my head is that normally with all my other tarps I use a bishop's bag uh, which we'll cover in another video and indeed if that video is already done then you'll see a link to it in the description for this video here. And a bishop's bag is great because it keeps your tarp together 
and makes it very, very easy to both set up and pack down. Uh, in particular with setup, all you have to do is just pull the ridge line end from one end of the bishop's bag, tie it to a tree, walk over to the other tree with the other end of the bishop, uh, the ridge line that you've taken out the other side of the bishop's bag and tie around the other tree. When you have to wrap your ridge line around your tarp, it takes longer to set up, is obviously slower, a little bit more clumsy a process. Anyway, carry on with getting this up, up around this tree. Okay, so I've done a simple knot around this tree, again, because this is only a temporary ridge line that I'm going to be taking off in a moment. I haven't done a full Siberian hitch, but my line is actually bowing very badly slack. So what I'm going to do is go back to the end with the figure nine and just pull the tension back on. Very straightforward stuff. So in much the same way that we use a straightforward knot on the other side just to anchor it to one tree, we simply use the one figure nine on one end to adjust the overall tension of the ridge line. And already I have this much, much tighter, sitting quite nicely on the line. And uh, when we put the new ridge line on in a moment, we'll take a look at how I actually tie it properly to both ends of the tree, one end using a knot, the other using a figure nine. Before we do that, I've now got to get my other ridge line out and we're going to move over to the tarp and thread it through very, very quickly and get it set up. Okay, so the first thing we need to do with our brand new ridge line, and I do apologize if I'm quite far away from the camera, the terrain I'm in makes it difficult for me to get it any closer, and I don't like zooming. The very first thing we're gonna do with our new ridge line is thread it through the tapes on the tarp. Now that is generally very, very straightforward to do. We just literally go one by one in order, making sure we get them in order and the same way round and thread them through. And this applies the same way if you're doing it on the ground, but obviously you're doing it on the ground, which is even easier because that keeps all the lines together. Uh, it keeps all the tapes separated, makes it very, very easy for you to, uh, to separate each tape and make sure you're running it correctly. When you're doing it on a ridge line like this, it's actually a lot more difficult. Okay. So we've now got it threaded through the tarp. I'm just checking here. Yep, they're all in order. It's all the correct way round. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take one end and just attach a figure nine to the other tree. And then we'll take the other end and we'll do a knot, an actual Siberian hitch around the other tree. And after we've done that, we'll be able to take this blue line, Amsteel blue, away completely and our tarp will still be standing on its final ridge, uh, final ridge line. Okay, so what I have here is a single straightforward figure nine made by Night Eyes. They're made of aluminium. Uh, they're actually quite expensive for what they are, but they are very useful. Now, every time I've shown these to people, they tend to go out by two of them. They stick one on each end of their ridge line, and they never do a knot again. Uh, and the problem occurs when inevitably they break one, and believe me, these can break very, very easily. Then they don't know how to do the knots. They don't know how to put their ridge line up properly, they can't get it tense, it's sagging in the middle, it collects rainwater, and they have a very uncomfortable, challenging night. So, doing a knot on one end not only makes it easier, less equipment to carry, um, and we'll get to another reason why it's better in a minute, but it also means you're always practicing a knot on one end that you can equally apply on both ends, if you're clever, to ensure that you have a nice, taut ridge line. I like a figure nine because it makes packing down a lot easier more than anything else. Setting up is setting up. One extra knot to tie is one extra knot to tie, but one extra knot to undo, especially in the cold, can be quite difficult. A figure nine makes it easier to get that first side down, and then you can focus on the other one when you get there eventually. So we're gonna run this onto our ridge line now. We'll move over to the other tree. We'll take a look at how that goes. Now, one absolutely critical thing when you're putting a figure nine on a line 
is not to make the mistake of trying to attach it to a Prusik. It's tempting, I've done it myself for many, many months, and I've always encountered the same problem. What happens is that the Prusik ends up eventually sliding along the line while your tarp is up, and it starts to sag again in the middle. Uh, if you set up a figure nine correctly, and if your ridge line is the correct length, which, by the way, should be four times, four, not three, four times the length of your tarp. So if it's three meter long tarp, you want a 12 meter long ridge line. Um, yes, if you set it up correctly, you should always have enough length on one end of your ridge line to go all the way around the tree and then connect to your figure nine. And that should apply universally regardless of the diameter of the tree. So what you want to do is you want to find an appropriate length to go around any tree. Now in this case, I can actually afford to give a whopping two meters or so. So this is an awful lot of extra line. Guaranteed to get around this tree, guaranteed to get around any other tree that I've ever pitched against. And here's how we connect it to the figure nine. We make a loop in the line. This is the side that's going around the tree. This is the side that's connected to the tarp, okay? With the anchor of the figure nine pointing towards the tree, run the loop through the hole of the anchor. And I say it's an anchor because it is kind of an anchor shape. If you actually have a look at that, it's a very much an anchor shape. So we run the figure nine through the hole, okay? We pull it over the anchor head, like so, and then we just pull it back. And it should sit like that, okay? It goes around the back of the anchor head and then it down through the hole. So when you put the line, when you pull on the line that goes around the tree, your figure nine is facing with the anchor towards the tree. That's the way a figure nine is done up. If you've got the anchor facing towards the tarp, you've done it wrong, you're not going to be able to suspend your tarp properly, fix it. So, I'm going to take this line, I'm going to run it around this tree and attach it to the figure nine quite crudely because there's no way I'm going to get any slack on, uh, any tension on the current line as it's not tied to anything at the other end. When you put a figure nine on a tree, the temptation is to try and get it as tight against the tree immediately as you can, which I've just done here. Okay, there's very little gap here. And the problem with that is it leaves you no adjustment to tension it up against the tree. You always want to make sure you have some adjustment. So what you do is let it hang a good six to 12 inches away from the tree, okay? There's no shame in it, there's no problem there because we will take up this extra length and bring it closer to the tree when we come to tension the line off on the other uh, from the other end, okay? So, or rather, when we come to tension the line up because it's not tight, uh, not tense when we tie the other end, okay? Going once around your figure nine is often not enough. I've had many an occasion where this slips back, okay? You pull on it, eventually the line gives in the lock, the grip gives out, the line comes back. Now, I've never used this cord before, so I can't say with certainty that it would happen. However, there is an easy way to be safe. What we do is we take the line back over the bit that's just come from around the tree. I'm hoping I'm getting this on camera. Make a loop, pull it through, and then just tension it up, and that makes a slip knot, a simple, quick release knot, okay? And then what we can do to further secure that is take a stick, stick it through the hoop we've just made and pull it back down towards the line, which I'll do now. One second. Okay, so this is a stick I just picked up off the floor. Any stick will do, it doesn't have to be strong because all it's there for is to stop this knot from pulling itself open, okay? So we just tension that off around the stick like a toggle and we've got ourselves a nice secure knot that isn't gonna come undone until we want it undone. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to the other tree and we're gonna set up the Siberian hitch. Okay, so as I, I think I mentioned earlier, this is a 15 meter long cord, far longer than I really need, but I wanna keep it as one length, simply because I anticipate using it on my DDXL or any of the larger tarps down the line. Uh, so, we're going to do a Siberian hitch. It's going to be a little bit awkward because I've got so much excess on this reel. But the first thing we need to do is go all the way around the tree. Hang on. Let's uh, sort this reel out. So I've got this reel here and all my cord 
is on a reel. So I'm going to reel it in a bit just to make things a little easier going forward. Okay, so I'm going to take the entire reel and I'm going to walk around the back of the tree. Okay, so just let it unfeed from the reel. We go, making sure we keep our old ridge line out the way, we go over the ridge line. You can go over or under, I'm going over. It's just easier. I dropped the bloody reel, which I knew I was going to do. It's the problem with reels. So we go over the ridge line and we go back around the tree the other way. And this will help center the ridge line between the two trees. Okay. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. Okay, so having come back around the tree, we go back over the ridge line from this side. And I've got this entire, <laughs> entire reel, which I'm about to use up. So we come back over the ridge line and we go back around the tree the other way. Up. There we go. Got rid of the reel. Okay. <laughs> so we can actually do this. We can go back over and around the tree and back over and around the tree as many times as we need to, to use up all the cord that we have available. In this case, I could probably do two more round. Know that we don't actually need to keep going round. We can just do it once one way, once the other way, and then we're ready to tie, the, tie it off. I'm doing it an extra time because I've got so much slack on this cord. See? Okay, once we come back to the center, regardless of which way we're round and which time, how many times we've actually gone round the tree, so we take the line that we've just pulled around the tree, we've come over the ridge line, we go up and back, creating a loop. This is the working end. We grab the line and then we pull it through. And that creates another one of those wonderful little slip knots. What we can do then is pull the line back through again and keep doing it to make multiple slip knots, a chain of them. Oh, make sure I don't get it tangled with the other cord. We don't need many. A few will do, and then we're going to get another stick, and we're going to stick it through. Remember, any stick will do. It doesn't have to be very strong. All we're doing is preventing this slip knot from coming undone without us intentionally doing it. So there we are. We have a, a reasonably good Siberian hitch. Now, I've done neater ones uh, many times before, and please take your time. Do a neater job than I've just done here, because I've got twisted lines and everything now, because that real. Uh, but the line is still slack, reasonably slack. So we're going to go back over to the other end and take all the tension up, all the slack off, put tension on from the figure nine. So we're going to do that now. Okay, so in order to do this, we're going to pull the stick out that we just put in before. I'm just going to pull the tension on. As you can see, we're moving towards the tree quite a lot. Just make sure I don't tangle it with my other ridge line. And here we go, all the tension is coming off, and see how much adjustment we've just used? If we hadn't left that extra foot, or well, eight to sort of eight to twelve inches on the line, we wouldn't have enough cord right now, enough slack, enough gap to put any more tension on this line than we already did. So we've got that nice and taut, that's like a almost like a piano wire now. Lovely. Go back over, back through, make this lovely loop again, pull the stick through, jobs are good. We now have a ridge line attached to our trees and running through our tarp, but that's not the end of it. What we need to do now is we need to actually attach the tarp, the ends of the tarp, to the ridge line. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's move on. Okay, so I've got two ridge lines on here currently, and I've just allowed the black one to slack off, which I wanted to do because we need to be able to separate the two quite quickly. You'll see that I've got these carabiners these little mini carabiners. Now I prefer this kind. Any, any small carabiner that you believe will be suitably strong is adequate for this purpose. Uh, I bought some cheap ones from DD and unfortunately they weren't adequate. Uh, the gates, the spring in the gates gave pretty quickly and the, uh, the metal pulled away from the actual gate and the whole thing opened up and slipped off. So that made them use, useless and fit only for the bin.
Now, while I'm doing untying this, I just want to men mention a couple of things. First of all, I'm a fond believer in quality over price. I believe that good quality items are worth paying a premium fee for if they're going to last forever. I'd rather buy an item once, know that it's going to last forever and never have to worry about it failing me in the field or having to buy it again. If you spend a pound, a British pound, on a carabiner and it fails on your first use and you have to buy three more of them, you've now spent three pounds. Three pounds will buy you two of these. So put the extra 50 pence in when you're buying and buy a bloody good one. Don't buy cheap rubbish. Now, these have to go on a piece of cordage and there are two different knots that you can use. Well, there's actually a load, but there's two different knots that I use depending on the cord that I'm using for my ridge line. In this case, I'm using a form of Amsteel that happens to have a lot of friction on it already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the humble Prusik knot. Prusik knot is the, one of the easiest knots in the world to tie. Um, I reckon the only knot that's easier to tie than that is a lark's head, uh, which we'll get to in a little while, possibly in a separate video when we're talking about guy lines. Prusik knots 101. Take your cord, make a loop, and there's one end. Just tie a simple overhand square knot in that end with both pieces of cord. Make it nice and tight. So we just got a simple knotted loop, all right? Just a loop with a single knot in the end, okay? That's strong, it's not coming apart. Take the middle of the top of the loop and go behind the ridge line. Take the knot that you've made at the end and pull it through once, pull it through twice, and you have a prusik. Okay, and you can actually pull it through more times than that if you need to. When you make sure, uh, when you are pulling it, pulling it tight, make sure that the lines don't overlap each other. Make sure that everything stays taut. Okay, and now when I pull on that, it won't move in either direction, and I'm really applying force there. But when you slide it with your hand, it'll move freely. Okay, so under normal lateral tension, it won't move under simple hand movement it slides very gracefully. Take your carabiner, clip it through the prusik loop you've just made, take a top end tape and clip your carabiner on. You can now tension your top. Okay so I'm going to use the same prusik knot on the other side and we do a carabiner on both end tapes. That way it's very very easy for us to tension our tarp up on our ridge line. Uh, because of the, the fact that I've got two ridge lines on here and the way the tarp has shifted or rather the way the old ridge line has shifted in a moment I'm going to have to go and tension up my ridge line. Uh, that's perfectly normal and you should always be willing and ready to tension up your ridge line again anytime you're setting up because let's face it it's an imperfect world things come undone and you just have to deal with it when they do. Okay, so the battery on my other camera has run out and uh, I just want to quickly get this uh, finished up now. Uh, what I've done is I'm now removing the ridge line, uh, the old ridge line, and leaving it set up on the new one. Uh, and what we'll do in a second is we'll take a look at the tarp and how we tension it up on the ridge line. Okay, so this is the old ridge line that I'm currently packing down. Uh, this will be going back on my DD 4x4. That's where it came off and that's where it's going back to and uh, I'll be leaving the yellow ridge line on my DD Superlight. Now, I've got a couple more tips I want to share with you before we conclude this video, and uh, hopefully this won't look so bad in editing now that I'm using two different cameras with two different image widths and qualities and all this lot, different frame rates even, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'm doing the simple figure nine, uh, figure eight pack down technique. And uh, as you can see, that is quite a wad of cord. It's actually larger than the entire 15 meter reel of the yellow Amsteel, um, which is longer, it's 15 meters long. So it does sometimes pay to have a thinner cord. Now, I'm no expert on thinner cords. I don't use them very often. I tend to use that Amsteel blue, and I've been very happy with it. I just figured that with this particular setup, I wanted to try something different, so that's why I'm doing this one. 
Okay, the camera that I'm using right now doesn't have a viewfinder, so I'm having to try and guess, sort of eyeball everything. But what we're going to do is we just slide, and it's really, really gentle when it slides. We slide this tape over to one side, and we do it in little bits. And the reason we do it in little bits is because we want to try and keep the tarp centered on its ridge line, rather than, uh, rather than having to readjust it from the end entirely. So what we have here now is a relatively well-centered tarp. Uh, and then we can peg the lines out. Now, there's one more tip I want to show you as relates to the Prusik knots that we just tied a moment ago on the ridge line. But one thing I do want to say, I'm not going to show it in this video now that I'm running on uh, this particular camera with no viewfinder, it would be very hard to actually cover it. Uh, if you take a look at the video, which I'll link in the description of this one, to my guy line knot, on that Amsteel Black and on any cord that you find a Prusik slipping on, use that, uh, use the knot that I demonstrate in that video, the guy line knot that I use, and you'll be able to make that actually bite properly and it will not slide. Uh, I've actually got about three more variants of that particular knot that I now use. It's a very useful knot particularly great on ropes and very slippery cordages. Uh, I don't need to use it on this one. I may end up using it for overkill, because it is overkill, but this cord is a lot, has a lot more friction on it than that black Amsteel stuff. Uh, so we'll go take a look at the Prusik knot. We'll finish this up with a little hint uh, that's um, very useful. Okay, so hopefully this is in shot. It's very hard for me to tell with no viewfinder. But uh, we, what we've got here is we've got our Prusik and the carabiner that is connected to the tarp, okay? This is, I'd say, a good maybe three inches long. Now, on this particular span of trees, that's fine because it's a three meter long tarp and these trees are much more than three meters apart. They're a good four and a half, five meters even, probably more than that. I've had the DDXL pitched here so that I, so I know that this tarp will always fill this span. However, that's not always going to be the case. There are going to be times, and I had one a couple of weeks ago um, when I was out with my friend Andy. Uh, by the way, hi Andy, if you're watching this. Uh, where we were pitching on trees that were closer together. And uh, what we found was that sometimes these particular lengths are too long. Now, rather than taking this whole thing off and cutting it down and retying it, there is a very easy and remarkably simple technique we can use. All we do is loosen it up, Disconnect the carabiner. Don't worry about the top sliding away. We can go grab that in a minute. Take the carabiner off. Just pop that in my pocket so I don't lose it. All we do is tie another knot. We just take both lines, run them together. A single overhand or square knot, as they're sometimes called, further down the length. And you can leave this knot in as well. And now, instead of about three inches long, we have less than an inch. I'd say a good maybe half an inch, three quarter inch. And we have our carabiner there. So now I bring the tarp back over, slide the Prusik towards it, clip it back on. And now if our trees are closer together, we only need really a tiny bit over the length of the carabiner plus the length of the tarp tape to actually accommodate it on a ridge line. So that's a really useful little tip. It also leaves a nice little bit hanging down that you can hang a flashlight on or, you know, hang some kind of lantern on. I'm sorry about the flies getting in the way here. But the point is that I don't have to mess around a great deal with this particular type of setup in order to accommodate different situations. Um, a ridge line should always be on the tarp, uh, regardless of whether you're ground pitching or tree pitching. A ridge line is, in my opinion, the most essential part of any tarp setup. It doesn't even matter if your particular pitch doesn't use the ridge line, you should always have one there. A ridge line guarantees that you can anchor your tarp to a solid anchor point in any weather conditions. And the number of times I've seen people try and do ground pitches without a ridge line, only to have their tarp blow away the second they unfurl it and them having to go and run off and chase it, 
It is honestly one of the most frequent things that mistakes that I have seen made that could very easily have been avoided simply by using a ridgeline. So this is a basic ridgeline 101. A ridgeline, again, as I've said, is equally applicable regardless of whether you're tying off to trees or doing the ground pitch with poles. In my opinion, a ridgeline is fundamental. So make sure you've got a good one. Learn the different properties of the line. I'm just now figuring out that this one has a lot of stretch in it, which I'll have to play out. It's quite common as well. Paracord does not make a very good ridge line in my, in my experience. I find that it stretches too much when it gets wet. Uh, it becomes quite brittle and uh, well, not brittle as such, but it becomes stiff when it's dried after it's been wet and uh, it just generally doesn't have what I consider to be the best properties of a ridgeline. It's okay in an emergency, it's not what I would use on a day-to-day -day routine basis. Uh, Amsteel is very good, Amsteel Blue it's called, which is actually black, don't ask why. That stuff, uh, which is commonly used for whoopee slings, makes a great ridgeline but is a slippery cord, so unless you're willing to learn how to tie uh, my guy line knot, which is the only knot that I know of, that and several variants that I've done of it since then, uh, that grips on slippery cord. Unless you're willing to, to, to learn how to tie that knot, I wouldn't recommend Amsteel for a ridge line. This thin stuff, I can't really comment too much on. Uh, it's a very well-rated, strong cord. Definitely uh, the bright yellow will be easily seen in the dark. Uh, the moment it seems to have quite a lot of play in it, which I'll have to work out over a bit of use. Uh, again, that's common with a lot of materials. Um, beyond that, it seems to be quite thin. Seems like it's very lightweight, compact cord. We'll see how it goes in real world use. When I'm not pulling on the tarp, it, the ridge line sits quite, quite level and fair. Um, the Prusik knots bite on it very well, so I'm very pleased with that. And uh, we'll give this line a go, and you'll see another video later down the line of me probably discussing how well this cord fared and we'll know whether or not I uh, like it because I'll either stick with it or I'll switch back to the black stuff, the Amsteel Blue. Anyway, hopefully you found this video on ridge lines and sort of basic ridge line setups useful. Uh, it's part of the Tarpology series. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know any comments, go ahead. If you know of any better ways of doing things, or you, what you think is a better way, or just an alternative way uh, to the way you've seen me do things here in this video, go ahead and leave a comment, we'll take a look. Um, if I really like it, I'll give it a go. And we'll, we'll see how it works out. Uh, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.